There was one time, about five years ago, when my mother complained about the doorbell in the morning. They called at night, between two and three o'clock. Insistently, demanding. Mom said that every time she was surprised that no one at home except her heard them, and she got up, went out into the hallway and asked, slowly opening the door, who's there? And the answer to her every time was silence. <laughs> At that time we didn't have a peephole, it was made during the renovation, two years ago, so she listened carefully, thinking she would hear footsteps or rustling outside the door. But in vain they called again, and again they did not answer her, and every time mom didn't dare open the door and go back to bed. In the morning, before leaving for work, she complained to me and my father that again someone came at night, persistently rang the doorbell and did not answer. My father, a skeptic and humorist by nature, said that it was a conscience or the ghost of a salary increase that came to my mother from oblivion. Mom herself did not dare to joke about it. I, as well as my father, did not hear these strange calls, and I thought that my mother heard them through a dream. But this was repeated every week with enviable regularity. Eventually, Mom just stopped coming, and the calls stopped at night. As it turned out, only for a while. Since last year one started suffering from insomnia if I could lie for hours in the dark, contemplating the ceiling and listening to the clock ticking in my ear. Time on such nights drags on slowly, like molasses. Only when it begins to lighten outside the windows, the long-awaited dream comes usually deaf and colorless. I did not try to take sleeping pills, and at night I brewed herbal tea chamomile, mint or lime, but it was of little use. And the night, a time of rest and sleep, turned into a painful wakefulness for me. It happened on one of those sleepless nights. It was the beginning of February, the night was dead and moonless. Snow was falling outside the windows. I was alone in the apartment. The mother and father went to the godmother, but could not return, as the buses were cancelled due to bad weather. I went to bed late, about an hour. I usually go to bed earlier, as couples leave for the morning shift. But as soon as my head touched the pillow, I realized that I would not be able to sleep any more. I tossed from side to side, wrapped in a blanket, covered with a pillow, strenuously forcing myself to fall asleep. But all my attempts were unsuccessful. According to the old tradition, I had to lie on my back and lie still, thinking about everything in the world and waiting for the sky to begin to lighten, because sleep would come along with the first rays of dawn. When suddenly I was startled by surprise, the doorbell rang. So shrill. Someone was pressing the bell button too hard, as if they wanted to wake up all the residents of the house. I decided that my parents had returned, and immediately hurried to the front door, and already reached for the door lock, automatically asking who is there. No one answered. I was on my guard. The call was repeated, and with the same insistence. Who's there? I'm asking to answer me. In response, silence. I listened, but there were no sounds outside the door, a complete silence. And then I felt terrible, I already had chills. Another call. I approach on tiptoe, and I look through the peephole. The playground is illuminated by the bright light of two electric bulbs. I see a boy standing on the threshold, about ten years old, in a simple fur coat, without a hat, in felt boots, mittens hanging from the sleeves on elastic bands. The hair is dark, the face is round, but without any expression, the eyes are large, colorless. It's snowing outside, and there is not a snowflake on him, and his clothes are dry. He raised his head and looked up, as if he knew I'm looking at him. And then I understand how could such a child reach the bell, and does not answer why. And where is he from? We don't have a single child of that age in the hallway. And from these thoughts, horror chilled me to the very bones. I kept looking, and the boy suddenly curled his lips, and his face darkened for a moment. 
He opened his mouth and said, Don't look at me. Voice hoarse, creaky, like an old man's, Don't look, otherwise it will be worse. I'll scream in horror when I stumble back into the hallway. And he's already scratching and wheezing at the door, he mumbles. I saw it. I've been thinking. I was thinking. And I, paralyzed with horror, stand and do not know what to do. And everyone there is scratching and wheezing. My God. I'm shouting to protect me from the unclean. And I begin to baptize the door with a trembling hand to help. Lord, save me from evil. And almost immediately, the grinding stopped. Something he wheezed, knocked on the door and fell silent. And I draw all the signs of the cross with my own hand. I stood there for another ten minutes. I listened silence. I didn't dare look through the peephole. I went back into the room, turned on the light and sat there until morning, until I lost consciousness from tension and fatigue. The parents returned by noon. They woke me up, complained for a long time about the bad weather and asked what happened to the front door. They said there were scratches on it. We have it covered with dermatan. The layer was recently changed. The scratches are small, but noticeable, deep. I thought I was going to faint when I saw them myself, but I didn't fall. I restrained myself. I haven't heard the doorbell ring since. Mom, too. And thank God. Someone or something, obviously, resigned to the fact that he would not be opened or was afraid that I had seen him. Or he will knock on another door, and, God forbid, they will open it for him.